Jack Leiter is getting called up by the Rangers. Let's dig into his pitch shape, some of his advanced data, and try to determine what kind of pitcher he is. Leiter pitched in just three games at AAA this season, but we can learn a lot from that. He struck out 44% of the batters he faced, posted a 3.77 ERA, and allowed four home runs with a very strong 5% walk rate. His mix consists of five pitches, a fastball slider, curveball, cutter, and changeup. The fastball is the best pitch in his mix. When he's not pitching at altitude, the pitch looks like this. 18 inches of vertical break, 8 inches of arm side movement from a 5.7 foot release with near 7 feet of extension. It's about 2 inches more vertical break than the average four seam fastball for that release, so it's dropping less than you would expect. The extension here is what I think helps him get his release height down to just below average so stuff models can like the pitch a bit more. It's a classic carry fastball that's above average in velocity by about two ticks and above average in vertical break. Combine all these traits together and this is a plus fastball according to Stuff Plus. From a location standpoint, he really elevates this pitch to left-handed hitters. And he does that because as you see on his whiff plot next to where he throws the pitch and where he allows damage, he generates a lot of swing up above the zone and that's generally going to result in swing and miss. I'm not entirely sure whether major league hitters will chase fastballs this far above the zone. I think he'd have similar success if he was able to bring down the location of the pitch to more of the upper third of the strike zone, like Bailey Ober for the Twins does really well. I'm curious to see where his lefty location lands in major league baseball compared to what we're seeing at AAA. To righties, he really hammers the outer third of the plate, especially early in counts. And then as he moves deeper into counts, he starts to elevate. I think there's an argument he should elevate earlier in counts, but I don't mind this approach as long as he's not leaking back the four seam into the heart of the zone versus right-handed hitters. The idea, I think, for a lot of carry fastball guys like this to hammer away from righties is that it sets up a fastball line or impression away from a hitter to work off of with your slider. Basically, tunneling, which to me is really just a byproduct of location. As a hitter, if you only see fastball up and slider away, you know what's coming based on the location it's in. Putting the fastball away thought in a hitter's mind may cause sliders to play up. I'm not entirely sure if this is backed up in the data, but you see it a lot with guys who have similar slider shapes to lighter, like Garrett Cole and Shane Bieber. Similar to lefties, he generates a lot of swing and miss at the top of the zone. Perhaps most encouraging is that a lot of the miss actually came in the zone, in that top third of the strike zone, as opposed to what we saw against left-handed hitters. His righty approach is just more projectable in terms of how the exact same locations he had at AAA will play in the majors. He's used the fastball 55% of the time at AAA this season. It's generated a gaudy 44% swing and miss, which is double the major league average for four-seamers. It wasn't in the zone at an above average rate, which gets back to how elevated some of his pitches were to left-handed hitters, but the resulting strike rate on the pitch was strong because he generated a lot of above the zone swings. The main thing here to watch is just lefty command and where that pitch sits, as I mentioned, but I'm pretty confident he's gonna dice up righties with the four seam, even if he shows say 90 to 95% of the command that he had at AAA this season. Now let's get on to his slider, which is also a really great pitch. It's 86 to 87 miles per hour with two to three inches of vertical break and five inches of sweep. This particular shape is one that I think a lot of starting pitchers with carry fastballs are starting to adopt. I think of Spencer Strider, Jared Jones, a lot of Dodger pitchers like Bobby Miller. It doesn't have enough sweep to be a sweeper, but it's also not a true bullet or gyro slider because the pitch is a bit too efficient, which means more of that spin is turning into movement. In this case, sweep to lighters glove side. It's in between a true bullet slider and a sweeper. I've called this shape a baby sweeper in the past, but I admit that's an absolutely terrible name. So if you have suggestions, I'll be eagerly awaiting them in the comments. A traditional slider probably feels like the most appropriate, but again, that's just not as exciting. Throw the specs of this pitch into a stuff model and it's also a plus pitch. It's above average velocity for a slider with five inches of sweep. And it might be as simple as that as to why the pitch has performed so well. But I also think he has pretty good feel for locating the pitch. He's nailing the outer third of the plate versus right-handed hitters, which lines up pretty beautifully with where he misses bats. And the damage he's allowing is mostly arm side misses back into the heart of the plate versus right-handed hitters. It's a pretty standard slider miss and damage patterns, I would say. To lefties, he's kind of supplanted the usage of this pitch with his new cutter, which we'll get to in a bit but he's still throwing the slider occasionally, mostly down in and mostly with two strikes for whips. 
Usage on the slider is 32% to right-handed hitters and just 8% to left-handed hitters. He's generating 40% swing miss with 36% chase. Both are above average for sliders in Major League Baseball, and perhaps most important to me is that he's striking the pitch at an above average rate, which I think is connected to how well he's commanding the pitch glove side to right-handed hitters, down away in the shadow of his own rather than way off the plate where maybe he can't really use it early in counts because the probability of a strike is low. I really like his location of this offering. His cutter is a pitch that he added this season, and it's taken over his slider usage to left-handed hitters, but he's not really throwing it all to righties. It's 92 miles per hour with 10 to 11 inches of vertical break and one inch of sweep or glove side movement. This lines up pretty squarely as an average cutter based on the specs here. It's slightly harder than the average, which is gonna help, but it's not gonna bridge into plus territory because it's not really picking up a ton of sweep. But that's okay. I think cutters are often tough for stuff models to grade because a lot of the time, the intention of them is not really to generate whiffs, but rather weak contact or to have another pitch to just strike versus opposite handed hitters instead of having to rely heavily on fastballs. His location of this cutter to lefties has actually been pretty pristine on the inner third of the plate, and I think it's important to look at the location of this cutter and forcing fastball to lefties together. He seems pretty comfortable commanding things to his glove side and up to lefties. I'd be curious to see over time if he's able to place the four seam more middle up or even kind of up away to complement that cutter location that's jammed inside a bit more. I bet that would give him more fastball swing miss to lefties because of how hitters would have to protect the inner third on the cutter. So while I'm kind of nitpicking the lefty approach a bit, I do think it's important that in the first place, he just has the cutter at all. Last year, he was throwing his slider to lefties more, which he still does on occasion, but he doesn't have to rely on that slider for strikes anymore to lefties, freeing it up to work more as a whiff pitch, where it'll play best, I think, to lefties down and in. He throws his cutter 21% of the time to lefties. He's not really missing bats with it, but the strike rate is up around 80%, which is plus. And in the super tidy sample of balls in play we have, it's not really getting barreled. This is a good addition for lighter this season. I like this pitch and how it complements his lefty mix. The other pitch he has to lefties that makes up pretty much all the rest of his right usage is his curveball. It's 81 miles per hour with negative nine inches vertical break and six inches sweep. This also lines up pretty squarely with an average pitch. It's about a tick harder than the average curve with slightly less sweep and depth, which is understandable given that it's harder. I think the thing I like most about this pitch is that it's not an early count weapon for him solely. He's throwing half of his curveballs in OO counts and the other half in two strike counts. I generally just don't like curveballs that are only early count pitches, especially when they have decent shape and are thrown with at least average velocity, which Lighters is. He keeps the pitch down pretty well too. There's an okay amount of swing miss on it. And it doesn't really need to be in zone a lot because he has two pitches he can strike at above average rates to each handedness of hitter. Again, the fastball and cutter now to lefties, and then his fastball and slider to righties. This is a peripheral weapon for him. It's got average shape and it works, again, like the cutter in the context of his repertoire. The last pitch in his mix is a changeup, which is almost exclusively a lefty pitch for him, so I'll go through it relatively quick. It's 89 miles per hour with 10 inches of vertical break and 14 inches arm side movement. This grades out right around average per stuff models, and it almost kind of looks like a sinker. All but one of the changeups he's thrown at AAA this season have been when he's behind in the count to a lefty. It's almost like it's a surprise way for him to get ground balls, which I guess I don't mind. It's kind of sharp usage of the offering, actually. The shape isn't bad, it's just a harder changeup. Not with a ton of vertical separation, but generally we see in these changeups that don't have a lot of vertical separation and are hard that they work in spots to generate ground balls when a hitter is looking for a fastball. It feels to me like this is just a behind the count pitch for him to protect his four seam to left-handed hitters. I see Leiter with two plus pitches and three peripheral average offerings. In my top 40 pitching prospects list, which I put out earlier in spring and is available to my premium Substack subscribers, I ranked him 14th, five spots off of Jared Jones. Was I low on Jared Jones? Yeah, probably. But I think I was also not buying that Leiter's issues last season were going to continue. I thought the fastball was too good, and he's proven that this year it is too good. The questions here are whether you buy the small sample command improvements. I think I do, but I'm really gonna be focused on how he looks versus left-handed hitters, fastball location in particular. So that's probably my other concern is whether just the diversity of mix to lefties is enough. I anticipate him not having too much issue with right-handed hitters. I'm not sure how long Jack Leiter is gonna be up, but I really do like him as a pitching prospect, primarily because 
of the underlying fastball traits, which I think are really strong. I have him pegged towards the top area of my 50 future value pitching prospect tier, which implies that he's about a two and a half war pitcher perennially for these first six or so years of his team control. I could see the argument for him being in the 55 tier, maybe towards the back half of it, which implies he's more like a three and a half war pitcher in those first six years of team control. I'm pretty curious to see how he does in his first go at the league here. We'll see if he stays up. Encouraging for sure if we see the fastball play, very focused on lefty location. This is one of the more exciting pitching prospects I think we're gonna see this year, aside from a Paul Skeens, a Kate Horan, maybe a couple other pop-up arms. Let me know what you think of Jack Leiter in the comments. I'll be there to answer any questions as always. And thank you for watching.